Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out. Poke it out. Poke it out. Whoa. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're finally back with another video. Uh, we had a little bit of a slow bye week because I didn't, I wasn't really just trying to pick up a bunch of random ideas and throw them together when there's really no point. We just got to wait for football to come back. That's exactly what we did, and now we're back. We got the New Orleans Saints versus Carolina Panthers week seven matchups to watch. This is going to be a fun game uh, in New Orleans. I'm really excited for this one. Can the New Orleans Saints? You know, do what they're supposed to do and not lose a meaningful game. We haven't lost a meaningful game against Carolina, the Carolina Panthers since 2016. So I'm very, very interested to see how this game goes. So before we preview the game as a whole, we got to look at some matchups to watch, some things to keep your eye on and get more in depth on player versus player action. Before we do that, though, I would like you guys to go ahead and join the New Orleans Saints Flick group chat called Champion Square if you would like to do so. There's a game chat where you can talk about the game live. There's, you know, a preview chat. There's a main chat where we can all talk to each, to each other. It's just a place for a bunch of Saints fans to get together and have some New Orleans Saints related talk. I love it so much and I hope you guys do too. Go ahead and click in the description, join the uh, group chat, and let's talk some Saints football. But until then, let's go ahead and get into the week seven matchups to watch. And the first matchup I would like to talk about is Michael Thomas versus Dante Jackson. A very interesting one here. It's going to be a very big reason whichever team wins as far as you know who gets the leg up in this matchup. It's a big one. Michael Thomas is finally making his return from his high ankle sprain injury after missing four contests straight, even though the fourth game was because he punched Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the face, but he still wasn't 100% either way. He was not ready to go in that game, and I could not be more excited. But how do you know that, Noss? How do you know that Michael Thomas is coming back? You said that two weeks in a row, and you were wrong both times. Well, I got you. Check out this clip. Oh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there he is. Show. What's up? <laughs> That's uh, right. You heard you heard the man himself say he's what coming he back said. next week. Yep, Michael Thomas is coming back. I can't be more excited. He looks extremely motivated. He posted this tweet on Twitter, which reads, "Had to jump in that mode." So you know he's looking for blood this week. I'm I'm I, I cannot express how excited I am. This dude played one game, and it was Week One versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So getting him back is huge. Uh, Michael Thomas is coming back to some pretty stiff competition, though, against who I can only assume has earned the number one spot in Carolina, and that is Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson has a 72.3 pro football focus grade, allowing 12 receptions on 16 targets. He also has grabbed himself two interceptions uh, on this year's so far, which is really good, speaking that it's only going into week seven. The one game that Mike was in this year was against a great secondary in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where he only recorded three receptions for 17 yards. But with the emergence of players like Emmanuel Sanders and Traquan Smith and the continued greatness of Jared Cook, it's going to spread the field a lot with Michael Thomas back. Drew Brees will have ample opportunities to throw him the ball, and that's something I'm extremely excited to see. Expect a different offense this week. I say Mike has the head edge here against Dante Jackson and the Carolina Panthers' pass defense. I think he's going to do a great job as far as, you know, doing what he's supposed to do and catching a lot of yards and catching a lot of touchdowns. He's going to have a good game. I think a lot of other receiving weapons are going to blow up too, but uh, I'm not going to get into that until the preview video. So let's go ahead and get into the next matchup to watch. The next matchup I have here is Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray, the new boom and zoom against Carolina's run defense. The Carolina Panthers have been pretty eh against the run this year. Like they have not been that great at stopping it. And that's something I'm very excited about. They have allowed a 121.7 rushing yards per game in 2020, which is 18th in the league. Alvin and Latavius are both set up to have a really, really big game here. Kamara has 50 attempts for 236 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns on the season. He is averaging 4.7 yards per carry. He also had has, excuse me, 38 receptions for 395 yards and three receiving touchdowns. He has been absolutely phenomenal and phenomenal in all facets of the game, and I'm really, really expecting him to have another big one here. It's like magic. Latavius Murray has 44 attempts on the ground for 184 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. This is one of those games like in the past where we've seen Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray both be detrimental to the game. They're both going to have a good game. 
I think they're going to do a great job. Latavius Art also has six receptions for 68 yards, so uh, expect them to be involved in both the run and the passing game and expect the New Orleans Saints to get the, ball, the, the offense going that way. I do think this is going to be a run-first game for the majority of it. Um, it's going to control the clock. It's going to keep the defense off the field. Do a lot of great things, and I think that we're poised to do it against a defense that is allowing 121.7 rushing yards per game. Couldn't be more excited. Like I said, I think the offense or the run offense should be heavily favored over Carolina's run defense. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Now, we have the last matchup to watch, which is my one of my favorites. This one is going to be quite ridiculous. That is Teddy Bridgewater versus the New Orleans Saints secondary. Of course, it would usually be Christian McCaffrey versus the Saints run defense, but Christian McCaffrey will not be playing in this game. This one scares me a little bit. Not because Teddy Bridgewater is an Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady or a Justin Herbert even or a Matt Stafford or a Derek Carr. We've played all of those great quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater is worse than every single one of them. But the reason this scares me is because Teddy Bridgewater spent a couple of years playing in the New Orleans Saints system. He's been playing against our defense. He knows a good bit about our playbook unless Sean Payton changed it up a bit. It's quite intimidating, I'm not going to lie. He's been okay this year statistically. If it wasn't for the fact that he's an ex-New Orleans Saint, I would not be worried. He has had a 73.0 completion percentage, which is like Teddy Bridgewater. He's a very short passer that usually completes a lot of his passes as far as percentages go and uh, doesn't turn the ball over much, even though it's changed a bit this year. He has 1,676 passing yards, six passing touchdowns, and five interceptions. The fact that he has one less interception than touchdowns uh, kind of, you know, gives me a little bit of hope for our secondary here. He's been nothing great, but he's been nothing horrible. He's a game manager with the ability to launch a bomb downfield every now and again, and that's something that the New Orleans Saints have struggled against. And the, the, pat, the secondary has been quite awful. Holy hell. We are 19th in the league as far as passing yards allowed per game goes with 237 per game allowed. We are also allowing 30.0 points per game as a defense as a whole. If we stop messing up coverages, Patrick Robinson had a couple of miscommunications, so did PJ Williams, other people, miscommunications everywhere. If we stop being so aggressive with all-out blitzes, we will win this matchup. The Saints blitzed heavily during the first half against the, the Chargers, and then they stopped in the second half, and we've seen the difference it made. You can't give the quarterback a huge alley to work with by sending two two safeties down for no damn reason. It pisses me off. Just let your front four do their work. They're a great front four. Trey Henderson has four and a half sacks. A lot of these, a lot of those have been coverage sacks. So if we just stop blitzing so damn much, like a bunch of retards, there shouldn't be a problem here. We just need to knock that shit off seriously. Um, other than that, I think that this is a pretty good matchup. The New Orleans Saints versus Carolina Panthers, both winning teams, both teams with high aspirations. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Who do you think has the edge in each of these matchups? I appreciate you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Adios. Oh, and we should be getting Janoris Jenkins back. That'll help the secondary quite a bit. He's been our best corner statistically this season. All right. Zero, girl.